And there's someone just having a nap in the middle of the road, as you do. It's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Road Rash on the Game Boy via a Super Game Boy cartridge plugged into my SNES. SNES thing. Um, never played this. Oh, what? I don't know. I mean, I played it on the Mega Drive and assorted other systems. Oh, that's pause. Okay, don't press that. How do we go? That's how we go. Slowly. I'm pushing shoulder buttons, which is silly because there are no shoulder buttons on the Game Boy. Um, okay then. I, I, I guess I see what they're doing. <laughs> it's not, it's not working. I'm trying to change the colour scheme, but we're pretty much stuck with this. Nasty orangey brown. It's not an authentic Game Boy colour scheme. Shame. What does that button do? That does that. That also does that. Yeah, I, I mean, Road Rash on the Mega Drive, awesome. Road Rash on the 3DO, incredibly awesome. Um, Road Rash on the Game Gear and the Master System, I think, is really quite decent. Um, Game Boy. Well, I mean, it's it's making a bit of an approximation of the game, but it's shockingly slow. The uh, the flicker on the sprites at the side of the road, it's actually like an old Atari 2600 game, the way it's flickering like that. It probably wouldn't look like that, would it look like that, on a, an original... Game Boy screen because the slow refresh rate of it means you probably wouldn't even see the flickering. I'm guessing. I've never seen it played on an original Game Boy. I'm going to have to try that. Um, you certainly have time to think about what you're going to do. Which is not <laughs> not authentic. Oh, uh, there's a copper. Oops! Yeah, I saw that coming. And there's someone just having a nap in the middle of the road. As you do. If you're mad. Which you probably would have to be if you were playing this game for anything other than masochistic reasons. Um... It's slow. It's a slow, flickery... I don't know. I mean, back in 1980, whatever it will have been. Or was it even an early 90s, maybe? Um, what would I have thought of this? Not sure. If I owned a Mega Drive and saw this, I... I and I did own a Mega Drive back then. I probably would have laughed. Um, but if all I owned was a Game Boy... Um, I don't know. Come on, punch him. It wasn't working. It seems not to... You know, I had several... several. I was going to say stabs at him, but I haven't got a knife. Um... But he didn't react, he didn't fall off. You would think one of those punches would have connected. But nothing. Um, yeah, it's not very good, if I'm honest. I'm not... There's no adrenaline rush because there's no sense of speed. It's like... We're riding a push bike. Slowly. I mean, we're leaning a lot around the corners, which is kind of surprising, given that we're really going quite slowly. Um, I 
unless these are huge trees and huge telegraph poles and they're really actually a long way apart. Mm. I quite like the clouds. It's a nice cloud effect with a bit of parallax going on. Whoops! Ah, oh, now we're going to have a nap. Which is kind of what the game would do to you, I think. Yeah, um... Can I even get to the end of this level? What position are we in? Second? Yeah. I think it would be hard to do badly. Like, really badly. Were we at first before that guy passed? Excuse me, that uh, genuine, genuinely yawning now. I mean, I don't like to say I'm bored, but I'm pretty bored. <laughs> finished. Yeah, this game's finished. There's. Not much to recommend it. I, the, the novelty is that they put the game on the Game Boy at all. But that's not good. Road Rash, Game Boy. Don't bother. Definitely, I mean, alright, if you can download it and put it on an EverDrive cartridge, fair enough. Have a go. Uh, you know, the, there's nothing to lose. But don't spend money on it you know, looking for a cartridge and, and buying one on eBay, just don't. It's not worth it. Unless they're giving it away. That would be fair enough. Okay, thank you for watching. Hello, today's question for Q&A is from Matt Hopper. Link to his channel down there. He asks, for Q&A, are there any games that you play specifically for nostalgic reasons? Playing certain old games for me is like listening to songs from the 70s or 80s. I'm hit by a vivid sense of how I felt at a certain point in time. You've made a few videos where you visit and talk about old places. <clears throat> but as I remember, it sounds like your younger days were not idyllic. Thanks for all the great videos. Thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, nostalgic memories, playing games. I have a lot. Um, and you're right, my, my, a chunk of my youth was not great. I have some bad memories tied in with a couple of games. Um, Battlezone and Virtua Racing, to name two, but I kind of get past that because the games are so good. It's like, oh yes, I remember this happened when I played this the first time, but then I carry on playing because they're great games. Games that I play specifically for a nostalgic memory? No. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, no, not really. There are, there are a lot of games that I play and I remember what I was doing around that kind of time. Um, and I do have specific memories tied to them, like Gyrus. I remember playing that with a guy who I was friends with on CB radio, Pinball Wizard, Steve. We, we both just played video games in, in the arcade at the Agora in Wolverton and that one appeared and we both played that. Um, most of my memories are tied to that particular arcade, um, Star Wars. Star Wars Arcade, there, again. There's another one though, it's Robotron. That takes me to Silver Blades Ice Skating Rink in Birmingham. Um, I used to go to a night, no, it was a youth club in Bletchley. And they put on a trip to Silver Blades in Birmingham. And I went with a load of kids who I didn't really know and they didn't really know me and they had a Robotron there and I went and had a go and they were gobsmacked because for reasons that are beyond me they didn't play video games and didn't know how video games worked and here I was playing this thing that was like ultra hard, ultra fast and looked like I knew what I was doing and they were like how the hell are you doing that? 
and I had a small crowd of them around me while I was playing it, which I found really weird because I wasn't. I mean, it's Robotron. You can, you just don't play well at that game. You survive if you're lucky. Um, memory of Space Invaders. Not actually specifically playing the game itself, but being taken to the doctors because I had tendonitis or Space Invaders wrist, if you like. I had spent, I don't know, all my pocket money and then some probably playing Space Invaders and have been on it quite a while and my wrists hurt and no. <laughs> It was from the Space Invaders, all right. Um, other other stuff tied into certain games. There are there's a there's a game, and I've mentioned it before. I can't remember what it's called. I've played it on Mame. I've got it, but I can't remember what it's called. Where it's kind of a Pac-Man clone, but you've got a top hat on. Um, is it Lock and Chase? Might be. Um, that takes me to um, Wicksteed Park. Yep, that one I remember. Um, God. Well, Sega Missile is the uh, Stantonbury Working Men's Club in New Bradwell around 1972. And um, there was like a, a, a submarine game as well, where you, you're in a submarine and you've got to shoot at the ships going by, which was also an electromechanical. And I remember having to be held up by my dad. He, he held me up so I could hold on to the periscope thing and play the game, because, you know, I, I was yay high. Um, I was four. Uh, yeah, and it's weird actually because I mean it's not just the recollection of the game, but it's the place. So those two games smell in my head like beer and cigarettes and cigars and pipes, because it was in a working men's club. Um, yeah, very very distinctive smell. Others, there are many. Mostly though they're in, in the Agora, in Wolverton, Defender, the guy who dropped the 2p on, 2p, it was 10p that went rolling across the floor. I was playing Galaxian, the guy on the next cabinet's playing Defender and he dropped his money and was chasing around this cafe in Wolverton because he wanted another go and he dropped his money. Yeah, many memories, but none that I actually play specifically for the memory. Um, I play them for the game. Really? Uh. <laughs> I don't know if the camera picked that up. <laughs> uh, Tasha burped. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I, uh, nothing else is coming to mind. I don't know whether I'll edit that out. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, this is Sam actually doesn't seem to play show uh, gameplay footage. She just got this intro bit, but I'm gonna have a go at this in a minute. This is a uh, James Pond 2 Robocod, and the thing about this, there's major nostalgia with this, but it's not the game, it's the music. I had the music for this stuck on the brain for 20 years. Um, I had the game first time around when it came out, it had good reviews, I thought that looks interesting, I'll try that, and I loved it, and I played it a lot, and the music is a real eel worm, and it got stuck in my head, and so later on when I sold my Mega Drive and my Mega Drive games, I still had the music going around in my head. Not all the time, I probably would have needed to see a doctor about that, but no. But every so often I would get the music just pop up in my head, and I'd be like, hmm, what's this from? can't remember. And 20 odd years later I started collecting retro stuff and I got the game again and I was like oh my god it's this. This is responsible for driving me mad not knowing what the hell was that piece of music. Um, yeah that's, that's a non-gameplay related gaming memory that sticks with me. 
And Joe's looking at me like I'm probably... No, I'm thinking I might try to play that as well. Yeah, ah, <laughs> I think you might like it. It's a great game. If you haven't played it, give it a go. I haven't played it. Joe mm -hmm. hasn't played it. She's in for a treat. Okay, anyone else who's got any questions they would like to ask, have answered in a video like this, I know what I mean. Um, leave your question in the comments below and begin with four Q&A so I know not to just answer in the comments. And thank you for watching. Ah, yes. So, I think the button that releases the hound to that subscribe button. <laughs> oh, hello. Yes. Do subscribe.